welcome to another Scryfall Shenanigans video. So originally I hadn't planned on releasing the Zendikar themed ones one after the other, but I enjoyed doing the vampire ones so much for the set. And also I inadvertently released that video a lot earlier than I'd planned originally in that I was going to um, for a while now just release videos every other day or every two to three days somewhere around there and uh, I accidentally released it early so I figured well why don't I just record um, another Scryfall shenanigans video and do the mythics of Zendikar in this one and then that's done and we can you know move on to some other sets as well so if anybody's got any suggestions for slices uh, beyond some of the ones I've seen already, then yeah, please mention in the in the comment to give me ideas of what sort of set you'd like to see me do this for, or what sort of slices you'd like me to see me do this for. So there are fifteen mythics in Zendikar. So I'm going to just do a quick overview of the fifteen, and then we'll drill down, have a look at them. In different slices and then we'll start to go in and have a look at some of the tags and see where the journey takes us. So there's a couple of white cards in the mythics, two blues, three blacks, three reds, three greens and this interesting couple of artifacts. So let's break that down. So first up we've got our legendary creatures so one in white, one in blue, two in black. We already see, saw this in the uh, Scryfall Shenanigans Vampires of Zendikar episode, or Zendikar Vampires. Um, so if you haven't checked that video out already, then I would, would check it out. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one. So let's just go through these. So I own a shield of Amira, Amiria, six and three white it's a seven seven legendary creature angel with flying and as it enters the battlefield you choose a color your opponents can't cast spells of the chosen color then we got lorthos the tide maker which is five and three blue it's an eight eight and whenever it attacks you can pay eight if you do tap up to eight target permanents those permanents don't untap during the controller's next untap step then we've got Kalitus, Blood Chief of Get, Get, 5 2 Black, 5 5, and then this inter interesting ability. So, 3, tap it. You destroy a target creature, and if, the, if that creature is put into the graveyard this way, you put a black vampire creature token onto the battlefield, battlefield where its power is equal to that creature's power and its toughness is equal to that creature's toughness. And finally, we've got Obnix of the Fallen. So three and two black, three, three with landfall. So landfall was a big thing in the set. So whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target player lose three life. If you do, put three plus one plus one counters on the Obnix of the Fallen. Three Planeswalkers Soarin', which we looked at in the previous episode. Three, three black. Four loyalty. The plus two is um, it deals two damage to target creature or player, and you gain two life. Minus three target opponent life total becomes ten, and minus seven you control target player's next turn. Chandra Blaze four two red five loyalty, plus one discard a card. If a red card is discarded this way, Chandra Blaze deals four damage to target creature or player. Minus two, each player discards his or her hand, then draws three cards. And then the minus seven, cast any number of red instants and or sorcery cards from your graveyard without paying their mana costs. And then finally, Nissa Ravain, two and two green, two loyalty. So quite low loyalty compared to the others. It's plus one. Search your library for a card named Nissa's Chosen and put it into the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Plus one, you gain two life for each elf you control, 
and minus seven search your library for any number of elf creature cards that put them onto the battlefield then shuffle your library it's almost like the reverse of those um namesake tutor cards that cropped up in the uh, planeswalker decks that we were funnily enough also talking about in the previous episode so this is a planeswalker that tutors for a card as opposed to a card that tutors for a planeswalker then we've got an interesting set of creatures so we have philidar sovereign so four two white four six vigilance life link at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. Obsidian Fireheart, 1 and 3 red, 4-4. Four, four. And for 1 and 2 red, put a blaze counter on a target land without a blaze counter on it. As long as that land has a blaze counter on it, it has at the beginning of your upkeep, this land deals 1 damage to you. We have Warren Instigator, so another red card, 2 red, 1-1, one, one, double strike. Whenever it deals damage to an opponent, you may put a Goblin Creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. It's an interesting way of um, getting stuff out from your hand. Notice it's coming from your hand, it's not tutoring from the library. Lotus Cobra, 1 in the green, 2-1, with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. So a very interesting uh, mana dork. Rampaging Baylos, 4 and 2 green, a 6-6 six, six, creature beast with trample and landfall. So for this one, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Then these two interesting cards, we've got Eldrazi Monument, Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, have flying and indestructible. At the beginning of upkeep, sacrifice a creature if you can't sacrifice Eldrazi Monument. We've got Eternity Vessel, six to cast. It enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it, where X is your life total, has landfall. And for this one, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have your life total become the number of charge counters on Eternity Vessel. So it's going to be some interesting tags, I think, to look at here, hopefully. The final one is Mindbreak Trap. So this is an instant. And if an opponent casts three or more spells this turn, you may pay zero rather than play Mindbreak Trap mana cost. Exile any number of target spells. I'm sure we're going to look at some maybe some traps. Now, the other thing I wanted to make a point about, because it's interesting, we have a namesake card which has... has Eldrazi in the name and I just wanted to place this on a timeline so if we look at cards which have Eldrazi in the name this actually existed or came out in a set um, two sets before Rise of the Eldrazi so we've got uh, a Zendikar then World Wake and then uh, Rise of the Eldrazi and in addition to obviously cards that have Eldrazi in the name then we've got cards that have the type Eldrazi. And um, you can see here, not surprisingly, this started with Rise of the Eldrazi. 192 cards which have a type of Eldrazi. And it's not just creatures. You can see here we've got tribal sorceries, tribal enchantments as well. Anyway, let me just get rid of that because that was an interesting aside seeing as the the Eldrazi uh, namesake bit had come up. There's 16 Eldrazi namesake. In fact, I think I'll leave that up for the moment in case there's something interesting there. Okay, so let's go back and start to drill down through these. So Band in Commander. Yeah, it makes you very sad. Yeah, prevents casting. 72 of those cards are prevent casting. So. No cast, no fun. Oh, 
Oh yeah, remember those sort of cards where it was set specific? I don't know if anybody remembers that. I was aware of it. So you can see here, one's mentoring, um, mentioning summon spells not being able to be cast. There's Meddling Mage. So you've got ones here that are targeting specific cards. But this one is, you know, cards of the chosen colour. So obviously makes uh, mono-coloured deck, players of mono-coloured decks very sad. You've got the various ones that, you know, nerf activated abilities and such like. Well, this one that uh, stops you playing creature spells. It's a four six for four, and you can't play creature spells. And there's a few like that as well, I think. Um, to target you. I'm trying to remember the other one. There's another one like that, which has quite a big upside, but you can't then play certain types of spells. And then these other ones that try and, I suppose, rebalance things a little bit. So each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. The same is true for artifacts, enchantments and lands. So again, interesting to see how this is implemented in uh, in Magic. And, you know, you can see why um, that one would be uh, banned in Commander. So, Lorthus the Tide Maker. Interesting. Actually, did I, I didn't look at. Uh, let me just go back a step here. Yeah, I'm always on the lookout. I tend to forget to check, but I was on the lookout for um, you know interesting rules text now on cards. Alt Commander. Interesting. So that's a tag in here. I was never aware of that before. Interesting. Where's that? Where's that? Um, I'm assuming that that would refer to yeah, anyone where it's an alternate commander in a commander deck. It must be. So let me maybe not do his first printing. For what we're interested in here might be a bit more enlightening Rhythm the for me okay don't we just see that I'm going to uh, see if see how different it looks when I do this first printing What I was curious about is I I do remember in Commander twenty eleven wasn't it the case that um, yeah the alt commanders there or one set because what there was a main commander and then two alts um, and one of the I think set of five were alternate. And then the other alternate commanders were reprints, I seem to remember. So, yeah. See, there's another five there. There's more there. I wonder when that stopped being a thing. There's quite a few here, actually. Is that because of the partner mechanic? Yeah. So they were all new. And 
sun at commanders. Hmm. It's the most recent stuff. This. Oh, my desert car of manor. Okay. I imagine it what would it skip there was those slightly simpler decks <clears throat> when they first started doing the uh, the decks or was it two decks for each set when that first happened where they only had am I right they only had one commander I think so so those wouldn't be coming up here because there were no all commanders from what I remember okay Oh yeah, there we go. C C fourteen, alt commanders. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, red, black, green, white, blue. So you attack herself. Yeah, so that's a freeze permanent ability. six of those so not many freeze permanents but um slightly more tap permanents so freeze because it's you know staying uh, they don't untap until the controller's next untap step as opposed to just tapping them if you do tap up to eight those permanents turn and tap during the controller do sorry during the controller's next untap step so it's the turn after that as opposed to just untapping with the next untap step yeah so that's why it's got both on there hmm what's that oh okay Where am I? What did I do here? <laughs> Got myself in a muddle. Okay. So we did look at this in the previous episode, so I won't drill down it again, I don't think. But on Nixless we didn't. What have we got here? So obviously some rules around clarification of landfall ability triggers. Okay, that's interesting. The land is above each landfall ability is permanent. You control a trigger. You can put them on the stack in any order. The last ability you put on the stack will be the first one that resolves. Okay. So we've got 191 cards in um, that reward you for playing lands. And obviously, I'm curious as to whether. Landfall existed before landfall, the keyword. Because off the top of my head, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I know whenever a land comes into play. Has it been eroded? No. There we go. I mean, that's, yeah, <laughs> quite a number of cards with that on it. And, um, you know, gains, PP counters, yep. Yeah. 
Okay. Sorin, we had already looked at in the, the previous episode. And you can see, yeah, I went through quite a few of these uh, rules text wise. Went down a bit of a, a soaring, uh, soaring and a Markov rabbit hole as well, so I'm not going to repeat that. Like I said, you can always watch the previous video if you're curious. Chandra Blaze. Okay. Ooh. this you cast red instant spells and red source rules in prince of the resolution of calendar place third ability you don't choose which ones to cast until you're actually doing so as the ability resolves you cast only the ones you want to and you may cast them in any order timing restrictions based on the cast type of sorcery are ignored other restrictions are not such as cast this card only during combat that's interesting then yeah. Each card you cast this way is put on the stack, then the ability finishes resolving. Those spells will then resolve as normal, one at a time, in the opposite order that they were put on the stack. They go back to the graveyard as they resolve. The cast card without paying its mana cost, you, can, you can't pay any alternate costs. You can pay additional costs, such as kicker. Okay. A mini wheel. Okay. Burn any. Oh yeah, because it, cause it grants flashback, doesn't it? Indirectly, because you put them when they resolve to go back in the graveyard. So yeah, it's like having flashback. <laughs> cool. Yeah, rummage. Although it's interesting because you're everybody's rummaging and everybody's discarding their whole hand, so obviously timing on that's important. You get to draw three cards, so obviously for yourself, um you want to do it when your hand's empty, I suppose, for maximum gain. Unless you've got something that's going to be benefit beneficial to being discarded, which is another matter. Mini wheel. Discard your hand, then draw a small number of cards. Okay. Yeah, as opposed to drawing potentially seven or more cards. Free cast another. 190 of those. Hmm. Did that first appear? Oh, it's definitely something I've looked at before. Oh yeah, illusionary mask. Okay. Oh yeah, these Vanguard cards. Yeah, I've never, never really owned any of those. I remember being once being in a game store, I can't remember where, where someone was asking about these. Yeah. Like whether they could get hold of any. You may activate Nissa's second ability, even if you control no elves. So there you go. So you can tick up. Maybe you don't want to search for Nissa's Chosen. No, nope. yeah. And also that you can <laughs> just use it to shuffle your library. So both of those, you can just use them and, you know, they have um, no effect beyond the, uh, well, that one shuffling your library. Yeah. Interesting. What have we got here? 
Drive an elf, tutor to battlefield, tutor creature, elf. Hmm. Interesting. So, six of those, including a couple from that are online only. So, do you know, we have an elf card. So, what, how does that differ from? Okay, so so yeah, four hundred and thirty-two cards that tutor for something, but only. Hmm. That did surprise me actually. I thought there might be more for some reason. Don't know why, but. Okay, moving on. The creatures out there in this. <laughs> yeah, so I'll see a note here about two headed giant. So, yeah, here we go. When does it trigger? As your upkeep begins, if you don't, the ability won't trigger at all. If you do, the ability will check again as it tries to resolve. If you don't have 40 or more life at that time, the ability won't do anything. Alternate wind conditions. Similar to test of endurance. Yeah, so that's um, 50 or more. And there are 71 alternate wind conditions in magic. his end which is the second sun a bit more efficient. Let's, let's do that instead. <laughs> I can sort of go back easier. Oh, I've got a few here. If a land ends up with more than one blaze counter on it, thanks to doubling seasonal Gilder Band, for example, the ability still only causes it to deal one damage. Just controller each turn. Okay. Oh yeah, because without a blaze counter on it, right? So they're not supposed to stack on the same thing. As in Arch Enemy. Pretty long effects check with the counter. 
interesting. Certainly uncovering some very interesting tags here, which is really the purpose, I suppose. <laughs> Let's give you ideas for decks and other things. Just for interest. Cyclopedian, cyclopedian, cyclopedian is that? Cyclopean 2 using my counters. It's interesting to see the uh, erratic text actually longer than the original. Put a my counter on a target non swamp land. That land is swamp for as long as it has a my counter on it. Activate only during your upkeep. When Cyclopean 2 is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, at the beginning of each of your upkeeps for the rest of the game, remove all my counters. From the land that the my counter was put onto from with Cyclopean two, but that but then a my counter has not been removed from. Okay. Cheapest version in collector's edition. It's a mono artifact. one on that. It's only trying to squeeze it in there. I do quite like these old style um, rules, sort of border area on the the old black cards. It's pretty cool. Or an instigator. One one for two with double strike. It's got this um sneak creature thing, so whenever it deals damage, you can put a goblin creature covering it onto the battlefield. So we have sneak, put a permanent from your hand onto the battlefield, with or without a requirement to sacrifice it later. 155 of those. Specifically sneaking creatures, 76 of those. And this is specifically sneaking goblin creatures. What happened there? Oh, I wonder what I did. Must have done the. Yep. Press the wrong key. Triassic egg. And flash, and we got sneak attack. Show and tell. Now, in terms of the other one, which was just sneak, which is probably putting a permanent. And there we have Academy Researchers. Oh, it's better. Eureka, actually. And Triassic Egg. It's obviously more here because it's featuring <coughs> you know, sneaking anything as opposed to just creatures. Um, what was that one I noticed there and I skipped over? Yeah, Didgeridoo, which is Minotaurs. And then you've got Goblin Lackey, stuff like that. Scripted Gateway. 
Pretty interesting art. Uh, Lotus Cobra. What tags do we have? I've got a number of uh, rules entries here. Again, we've seemed to have noticed this with the uh, the landfall stuff. So, this is an urgent animus. Stone cedar here event. Tarnis region. I know. Mana producer, which could. Yeah, non land cards that would generate mana. 702 cards, you know, something we've definitely looked at before. And then rampaging Baylos. There's been a few commander products. Not quite so many landfall related rules there. Repeatable token. Oh yeah, there's Alpha Tyranax, that's right. So six five for four and two green. So it's just um you know, just a vanilla creature. Four and two greens, the same casting cost. But a six five instead of a six six. And with this it also has this extra abilities on it, trample and landfall. Yeah, repeatable token generator. It's pretty cool. But there's a lot of those. They yeah, doing it off a of landfall. Okay. This is one of my favourite cards. Um, one of the reasons is I'm pretty sure some early product I opened, it might have even been, I may have even pulled a full one of the, full one of these in something like a deck builder's toolkit. Yeah, I do remember it being in a commander deck. Yeah, so there's just a reminder here about, you know, the whole thing to do with um, indestructible. So lethal damage and effects that say destroy won't cause a creature with indestructible to be put in the graveyard. However, a creature with indestructible can be put in the graveyard for a number of reasons. The most likely reason were if it's sacrificed, and hence on here, um, it's got the beginning of upkeep sacrifice a creature. So, yeah. Um, if it's legendary and another legendary creature with the same name is controlled by the same player, or if its toughness is zero or less. Boost to all, keep cost. So yeah, it's um it's an anthem effect. Plus n plus n. Might be limited in some way. See it in white quite a bit. Um yeah, this gives in indestructible there's a number of cards. I'm curious um I don't know how easy that is to search, but you know, stuff. So, with that, let me just sort this in order of printing. Consecrate land. Oh, yeah, of course, Guardian Beast. Dark Steel 4, which does artifacts. Tree folks and forests. It's creatures you control.
Yeah, it's got a few with like additional caveats on it. There's ones here that just do like instance just for the turn. Now Odric, of course, does this business where at uh, the beginning of each combat creature you control going first strike until end of turn of creature controls first strike and it does the same for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, text proof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample and vigilance. Very interesting card. Eternity Vessel. Learned for self life, life gain matters. So we did look, we did look at this previously in an, an earlier episode, I believe. This set, setting life total, and there's other cards where you can sort of, you know, put a sort of accrue life in some way, store it, and then transfer it back as well. I don't think necessarily they might be in this list. I'm trying to think of the one now that I'm thinking of. <laughs> the one that I'm thinking of. Because I can see the card but I can't remember the name. <laughs> if anybody gets that. So yeah. Recognise the artwork. It's one with a cat on it, um, and the cat's looking at something, or oh, it's a cat creature. Oh, Don't they have something like sun in, yeah. Is it sun droplet? No. I think it's something with sun in it. There's now a white card. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I was right. Sun droplet. Yeah, so it's just another. Yeah, so it doesn't set your life total. But I was just trying to think of the, you know these sort of cards where you can accumulate life, which then you can um, give yourself back. You know, and that was the one I was thinking of. And he says, oh, cool. oh, interesting, uh, yeah, so, is this landfall? Yeah, it is landfall again. Okay, so, yeah, some notes here about um, instances where, you know, changing life total just needs to be clarified in like a two-headed giant uh, game. Now that's, in, now that's interesting. So for your life total to become the number of charge counters on its own, you actually gain or lose the necessary amount of life. Okay. Other cards that interact with life gain or life loss will interact with this effect accordingly. Okay. So that's cool to know. And yeah, the number of charge counters may be changed by other spells and abilities. Charge counters on it. So you can what proliferate. Hmm. Mind break trap. Okay. Suppose you only pay zero. It's only a number of target spells, okay. Yeah, always interesting to see how, you know, alternative costs are clarified, um, just in case stuff gets uh, <laughs> exploited or, uh, you know, synergizes in interesting ways or gets leveraged to certain ways that maybe uh, people haven't thought of. 
was interested to see clarification on alternative costs around that. Yeah, get a spell free, potentially free, because of this. Hate storm. Interesting. Eighteen hate storm cards. Oh, okay. Is that because of the each turn business? I suppose so. Yeah. So yeah, hate against storm. Okay. Hmm. As opposed to a storm of hate. Or is it class as potentially free? Cards that can be played without spending any resources. Can, potentially. <laughs> can is the, the key thing here. Oh, in. I put there. I mean, is, didn't I? Release date ascending. Interesting that it's on an unglued card. Of course, yeah. If you have a high enough affinity, good old affinity. Could that potentially happen with? Um, what was it? There's no way that could happen in uh, the other. Uh, what was it? Yeah, Metalcraft doesn't do that, does it? Yeah, so it makes. Yeah, why? Affinity was such a problem. And looking at this, we'll, we'll actually have a look at the traps because it's an interesting thing. Yeah, you know, like were there any sets where there were quite a number of cards where you could cast stuff for free? Or was it potentially free? So. Let's do that. Um, was there any reason I wanted to go back to this? I did this save this, but I don't think. Maybe it was just to have a look at these. Yeah, it got interesting here, didn't it? With these, um, where they like sort of have the actual um, the symbol there for specifically. Was it colourless manner? So So Lots of, I mean, you've obviously got, um, let me see if I can think about the best way to do this across, because I am curious as to whether there were any instances where you've got something trap. Okay, so it's going to come up with trapper. So yeah, here's our... Zendikar stuff. I'll filter this out in a moment because yeah, there were lots of lots of traps in in here. You can see in both of the blocks. I'll try and filter that out in a moment. I just wanted to see whether it's something they've used specifically anywhere else. Not really. I mean, just I mean, you know, you know, a lot in a set. It looks like. Let's try and do that. So we'll have a look at the set Zendikar. So there's 13 traps. I'll, I'll order these by um, rarity. WWK, I think, wasn't that worldwide? Yeah. 
Okay, so rarity ascending. So what do we have? We had one common, quite a number of uncommon. Three rare and then one mythic. So it looks like the bulk of them were at uncommon. And you can see like all these conditions on them. In terms of uh, paying the alternate costs. And then in World Wake, we got a lot less. You can see these ones, look, a number of them are conditional on, uh, on a colour. Let me just see if that was... Yeah, it looks like it was a cycle. For any colours. I don't know if there are any specific cycles in the the other one. Um, let me just look and see if I can see why there's all five colours. I don't think so. Because I don't see a blue one at Uncommon unless it went across. No. I don't think there was a sort of s subset of a cycle in here as far as I know. See, these all look very similar with the three, yeah, uh, three or more creatures business. But it looks like it's straddling ra rarity there. So, yeah, with these I deliberately don't bring up the um, MTG wiki. Um, so I don't know without looking whether there was a, but I, I don't, I'm pretty sure there wasn't a circle in here. That was interesting. There was, yeah, it's quite a number of, in that block, um, there were traps or something else as well, which I'm having trouble remembering. I do have um, a, f a full set musings for this, by the way, which I, in fact, I've got a couple now, I think, so I'll, um, I think I will uh, include links to those as well. If you're curious in, in seeing where I've gone through, like the set as a whole. So there we have, I think I'm going to stop there. Um, that was really interesting. Glad I did that. Again, another one where I deliberately didn't look at it at all until just before I did the video when I was like setting up the slices. Something I I attempt to do. Um, it's not always the case because sometimes I'll start recording and then realise I've made a major mistake and have to start re-recording. But generally, I try and do these where I just literally do the slicing and then shoot the video within, you know. Uh, you know, very close time frame. Um, so yeah, I find it's much more fun. Uh, I get all sorts of interesting things come up that maybe I wouldn't think of. Of, or I'm not because I'm not overthinking things. I suppose that's what I'm getting at. So thanks once again for watching. Bye for now, and I will catch you in a future video.